to stay motivated. I am here with John McCain. Is that right? Yes, sir. You got it right. Got you, got you. John McCain, a real estate agent, multi-million dollar producing agent, uh, amongst other things that we'll get into. But really, man, um, I really want to dig into who you are, your journey. For sure. Um, Definitely. And your career. So, thank you. Where are you from? All right. So, I am from Kenner. Okay. Okay. Um, some people say it counts, some people say it doesn't count. <laughs> My thing is when you fly into New Orleans, you fly into Kenner. So Kenner counts. I like that. That's my first time here. I like that. <laughs> um, so grew up there, um, went to school in the city, went to church in Central City. So um, always was in New Orleans, although I grew up in Kenner. Okay. So um, that's, that's where I was from, born and raised. I, I lived in New York City for a short period of time. Oh, um, I worked with Levi's with their PR department. Um, and then after that, I came back here. It was too crowded for me. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of a little bit about like where I'm from and stuff like that. Okay, okay. And yeah. what high, high schools did you go to? So I ended up going to two high schools because of uh, Katrina. Okay. Yeah, so I, I was in high school during those times. So I went to Destraham and I went to Jesuit. Okay. okay. Yeah, so. And so you I got, college or anything? Yeah, I did. I went to uh, Loyola, so. Okay. Stayed in the city for school. So I went to Loyola University. Um, at Loyola University, I studied business marketing. Um, so I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I just knew that marketing mm -hmm. would be important, you mm -hmm. know? And uh, now fast forward, I'm able to see that even with my career as a real realtor and being in the real estate industry. So, so yeah. And being a realtor, it's a lot of marketing. Like, oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> it, it, marketing <laughs> yourself, marketing the home. Right. It's a lot like, being a real estate agent, these days, it's it's really like a, a hard job. I mean, I'm yeah. not giving much credit. Like, oh, thank you, man. Yeah, I will say I'll be hundred percent honest. Even when I went to go take the the test um, to get my license, you know, I was thinking. You watch the TV shows. You're like, man, if they could get their real estate license, you know, I could get my real estate license. The test can't be that hard. <laughs> um, but the test was hard. <laughs> but. Um, but yeah, no, but I, I mean, I studied, you know, I actually ended up getting, part of my story is I ended up getting my real estate license um, in 2020 mm -hmm. in the middle of COVID while COVID was going on. Um, so I just, I took two weeks. I didn't go anywhere. I just studied. I took the online class. Um, and then from the time I decided I wanted to be a realtor to the time I had my license was about 30 days. Um, mm -hmm. And then after that, yeah, I just been going ever since, but marketing has been a huge part of that piece for real. So gotcha. So let's just dig into uh to uh back to twenty twenty and prior to jumping to take the test, yeah. Really what pushed you to even want to pursue it or you know, yeah, for sure. choose that lane. Yeah, for sure. Like for me and even people that are watching this, like I've always been an entrepreneur. You know, so like even when I was a little boy, we used to sell uh, lemonade, sweet tea, whatever, you know, yeah. to make a hundred dollars a day. And you know, little little boys go buy some Pokemon cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've always been like that go getter, that entrepreneur. Even throughout my twenties, had a food truck, had mm. multiple clothing lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I always was a go getter. Yeah. Um, so how I got connected to real estate was that in 2020, um, right before then, 2019, a buddy of mine uh, was doing real estate in Mississippi, and uh, he was working with investors. He was wholesaling. And he was like, John, I think you'd be great at this. So I was like, he told me about it. Honestly, I was like, I'm not gonna do it. Until he called me like at the end of that year and told me how much money he made. And I was like, what? Yeah, it changed your mind. <laughs> <laughs> it changed my mind for real. So I was like, all right, so I started doing it. Um, I had a lot of success with it. I closed six deals within a short period of time. But while I was wholesaling, I ran into a bunch of sellers that did not want to sell their price, their house at a discounted price. Um, so I was giving away all these listings. Mm. Um, so I just kept giving away all these listings. So for me, when 2020 came around and I was stuck at home, I was like, man, I probably, for me, I could have made more money. The amount of listings I was personally giving away, I could have made more money if I was actually the realtor mm. for those listings. Um, and then also, you know, being a realtor and wholesaling, like, they're not mutually exclusive. There's a way to be connected with both. So that's what led me to getting my real estate license. Okay, okay. All right, so now you being a realtor today, mm -hmm. um, do you f still feel wholesaling is great? Because I've heard a lot of things like realtors don't like wholesalers, wholesalers don't like realtors. So since you've been on both sides of the fence, how do you feel about that? 
Um, so being a realtor, starting off as a wholesaler and then becoming a realtor, um, I personally think that there still is a need um, for wholesalers. Um, even when I got into wholesaling, there are certain sellers that need to sell immediately. They don't have time for the whole process that it takes mm. going through a realtor. So from my perspective, I think there still is a need for wholesalers. Okay. Um, so I don't have a problem with wholesaling um, or wholesalers. Um, especially the way I was taught and the way that I did wholesaling. You know, I always communicated to the sellers like, you're doing this for convenience, you're doing this for speed, um, you know, so that comes at a discounted price. So they knew, they were well aware that they can get more, you know? So I just think it depends on, on the, who the wholesaler is. Uh, if you're a wholesaler out there and you're being honest with people and you're saying like, look, my uh, value proposition to you is I'm gonna get you quick money, but it's gonna be at a discounted rate, then I personally don't see a problem with that. Now, I think that if there are wholesalers out there that are like, you know, dishonest, you know, or you are talking to a seller that tells you they're in no rush to sell, they really need to get the most amount for it, you know, that's between, that's you, yeah, I mean, that's yeah, on you. Yeah. You know, me personally, like if they have wholesalers that are out there kind of messing over people and the people don't know what they're doing, you know, I'm not really for that, but you know, to each is their own, so. I gotcha, I gotcha. And really what pushes you to stick to that character, like keeping that uh, kind of persona, you know, being honest with the yeah. clients and yeah. things like that. Yeah, like for me personally, my faith and spirituality is very important to me. Um, I know everybody has a different belief systems, but for me, I'm a Christian, you know, I believe in God. Um, so that was kind of how I was brought up. Um, through my own life experiences, you know, my faith was solidified, you know, because it's one thing to believe something because somebody tells you to believe it. It's another thing to believe it because it's like, You've seen some stuff happen, you know? And you've gone through and, it. And you've gone through it. Like, you've been, like, with your back up against the wall, and, like, your faith was the thing that got you through, you know? Yeah. So, um, for me, that's kind of been the thing for me personally that, you know, makes me want to operate uh, in honesty, you know? And, you know, it's a universal law, you know, it's a scripture as well. Like, whatever you put out there comes back, you know, which you, you reap what you sow. Exactly. So, that, you can't get around it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, you could you know, get ahead a little while, but eventually it's gonna come back to get you some type of way. You know, exactly. that's how the universe works, that's how God works. So I've seen that firsthand, so I'm not trying to be on the bad side of that, so. Exactly, yeah. exactly, I definitely agree. Yeah. So going back to 2020, you take the test, mm -hmm. you pass, so what are your next steps and what are your moves in your, uh, your chapter? Right, so 2020, I take the test, I pass, um, I had a family friend that owned a brokerage, a small brokerage, uh, Baron One Realty. I'll shout them out because that's where I started. Don't forget where you start from. Exactly, you watch exactly. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am thankful for that um, season because I was able to get a uh, hands on experience. Um, but to be 100% honest, like I got my license in July of 2020, um, I did not close on my first house until February of 2021. Mm. Um, so um, so let's talk about that season. Is that yeah. is that because of COVID? Is that what was really that? Um, I think for me, I was. A, I mean, I'm a I'm a new realtor, and I didn't know what I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to get clients. You know. So what I did every single day um, for months, I would get on Facebook, and whoever's birthday it was, I would message them saying, "Hey, happy birthday." Not sure if I've communicate this to you or not, but I am a realtor now, so if you are ever in need of a complimentary session to learn like how to buy or sell, you know, I would love to offer that to you. So I did that every day for months. Um, I mean, I told everyone, I just kind of kept putting it out there, but for me, I think being a new realtor, uh, people, they don't trust you yet, they don't really think you know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so I think all those were factors into why it took me so long to get my first deal. I didn't know w what to do or where to get the deal from. So. so during that season, you know, from that July to that February, um, did you have responsibilities? Were you, yeah, what so, was going on in life? Like? Yeah, so I did, I did have responsibilities. A lot of stuff was going on. One, I got married. 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> I got married like in September of 2020. Um, so I, I, against what I wanted, I had to like pick up a full time job um, as well. So I think that was another layer to maybe the amount of time that it took me to get my first deal. But I was married, I had my real estate license, but like I needed money to take care of myself and you know be an adult. Um, so I, that's why I had to end up doing it. And then I just kept pushing the real estate as being a realtor, like in the evenings and the weekends, kept telling everybody about it. Um, and then eventually, I would say we closed that one in February, so we're on a contract in January. So about the end of December, um, beginning of January, someone reached out to me from marketing. This is crazy. This was marketing that I had done at the be beginning of 2020, connected to wholesaling. That client called me at the, like almost a full year later and was like her and her husband were looking to buy a house and they wanted to know if I could help. Mm. So, you know, and then kind of make a long story short, after I sold that first house, all the seeds that I had been planting for almost a year kind of started to harvest. Harvest time came, and then from last February to now, um, I've done close to $9 million in sales. And last year was my first full year as a realtor. So, ooh, ooh, so ooh. it's been a good journey. Bro, I, I, I just want to elaborate. I feel like God tests you in those yeah. moments, you know, especially yeah. like those months from July to February. You yeah. know, you're putting in that work and then, oh man, I gotta get a job now. Yeah. You get married. Just like a bunch of like, just walls caving in on you. Yeah. And it's really like, test your faith and really just where you really have to find your strength and look for your strength. And I oh. feel like, man, you just, you conquered it. Oh, thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to, you have to see it when nobody else sees it. You have to see it even when your situation doesn't look like it's going to be that way. Yeah. So I just, I kept that vision in my head and I didn't let it go. No. You know, I feel like the only thing that was going to stop me from being successful was me if I would have let go mm. of what I saw in my head. Mm. So that's like anybody watching this, if you got that vision in your head, you can't let go. I could have let go after the first month, second month, third month, fourth month. I could have let go, but I was like, no, I see this vision and I'm going to keep putting in the work. Um, and, you know, we live in a microwave generation where it's just like a lot of people just like cook their food in the microwave. You know, you got TV dinners in the microwave. And you know, the microwave is cool because your food gets cooked or hot quickly. Yep. Um, but when it comes to like the laws of success, especially when it comes to real estate, from my experience, like a lot of times it does it's not like this. It takes time. You know, there's a season for planting those seeds and you know, tending to the field and then then the harvest comes. Mm. But you can't expect the harvest the, the next day after you just put the seed into the ground because it doesn't work that way so. exactly exactly so let's talk about your first closing like how, yeah. how how was that i mean so i mean i was to be honest my first closing was 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 tough my first two closings were like roller coasters <laughs> and i was like what you know so like my first closing uh, we had put in an offer on the property and it, what kind of worked in my i guess advantage is that the, my buyers knew I was a new realtor, but they wanted me because I was a new realtor. Mm. So there are buyers out there, and then anyone that's a new realtor, like what I would tell you is your value proposition is you are hungry, um, that you will work all day, every day just for them. You will answer the phone call when they need you. There would never be one time where they call you and ask you for something where you can't deliver you're able to do that as a new realtor. You don't have any other clients, you don't have anything else going on. So that was my value proposition to them. And I told them like, hey, I'm not doing this by myself. I have a broker that has over 20 years of experience that's gonna be walking alongside me to help mm -hmm. assist you. So that's what you, that's your value proposition. That was my truth, that's what I shared, and that's what we went with. But um, we ended up getting into a situation where um, the inspections were done, we got into negotiations, the buyer wanted the seller to give a credit or come down on the sales price because of some of the deficiencies. The seller said no, and a buyer said deuces. So actually my first deal like fell apart. Mm. Um, and then maybe like a week passed, and then that agent called me back and was like, oh, the sellers have had a change of heart. You know, if your clients are still interested, they're come down on the cost to accommodate the deficiencies. So then we went back, but it was, uh, the negotiations were, were tough. 
And it was so bad that at the closing, my buyers did not want to sit in the same room as the seller. Ooh. They had to put the seller in a separate room. So uh, that was my first closing. You know? <laughs> <laughs> my second closing was just almost as bad. My buyer got very upset with the, that seller because the seller was taking kind of some shortcuts on a new construction that they were buying. And he got so angry that he got in his car to drive to the house to confront and fight the seller. Mm. Um, but thankfully the seller wasn't there. So those are my first two deals. After that, everything else kind of got a lot smoother. So man, do you have a favorite closing? Um, favorite closing. I do have a favorite closing. Um, there's a there's a family that was moving here from Atlanta. Um, I got introduced to them through my wife's um, father, um, and they came down here months and months before they had to move down here. A beautiful black family and two little kids. And they went, we took them to breakfast, my wife and I, um, in Mid City. Uh, we went to Ruby Slipper, um, right there on the corner. And um, they said that they were gonna trust me to be their realtor, which I was honored by because I still was relatively new at this point. And for me, they were buying a house at 600, 600 their budget was really 600,000 to a million. So this was like a 600,000 to a million dollar client that was gonna trust me. They're moving here from Atlanta. They don't know anything and they really just desire a really nice home to raise their family mm. in. So anyway, make a long story short, um, you know, the husband would be down here, then the wife would be down here and they would look for houses and go all over the place. But make a long story short, I was able to find them a home um, that they really loved on the North Shore, had a pool house, had a pool, beautiful home in a gated community. Um, and it just felt really, uh, and the kids came to the closing. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I would say that's probably one of my more favorite closings okay. um, Just because of they were in desperate need they had sold their house And they had to be out of their house by a certain date and their job was starting here by a certain date So it wasn't necessarily like oh, I'm gonna make money It was like I really was meeting a, a real need for a yeah. real family um, So it was just a lot of cool dynamics, but that's probably one of my more favorite uh, I guess one of my favorite closings. And that's a lot, like, <laughs> just yeah. that, just the amount of uncertainty and uh, so many moving pieces. And yeah. and it's like, you know, the, the clients, like, they understand, but they don't fully understand. Right. Um, and you're right. trying your best just to fulfill, like, all their needs and everything. Man, that's a lot. Yeah, and then another piece to that particular deal is that the house did not appraise it for what the offer was. It, the mm. appraisal came in like maybe 50,000 less, but this was oh, like man. in 2021, middle of 2021 where, you know, things have been yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. the last yeah. couple of years. Um, so I, th I didn't think that the sellers would come down low enough to meet where the buyers were, were willing to go up to, um, but it happened. So it was, it was uh, definitely something to celebrate. So speaking of uh, the market, how do you really manage or handle uh, this crazy real estate market uh, that we're in. Right, for sure. So kind of like mentioning like how crazy it was in 2020, 2021, with the interest rates, uh, where it was definitely a crazy, crazy seller's market. Um, over the last, I don't know when you'll be watching this, but um, right now um, we are in August of 2022. Um, so right now over the last month or two, we're seeing a shift um, I, I consider the market correcting itself because mm. it was too crazy. Um, from last month to this month, the median price in the uh, MLS dropped by almost thirty thousand um, for the, the, the sales price. Mm. Um, but to answer your question, like there is no such thing as a bad market. It's either a buyer's market, a seller's market, or you know, or something mm. somewhere in the middle. Um, so if you're in real estate as a realtor investor it doesn't matter um, what you do is you pivot with the shift you know when the shift happens you can either be in front of the shift with the shift or behind the shift those who really do well are those who get in front of the shift mm. so to answer your question like you just move with the you move with the shift you know you got to know your data you got to do your research um, you got to stay on top of everything but the market is the market is gonna is too strong for you to fight against. If you try to fight against the market or economy as an individual person, you're gonna lose. 
every so time. So every time you're gonna lose. It's undefeated, you know. <laughs> so uh, so that's what I would say. Okay, okay. So just getting back to uh, real, being a real estate agent, mm -hmm. um, is there any advice you would give anyone who's thinking about becoming a real estate agent or just have thoughts about it? Mm -hmm. What would you say? Yeah, definitely. Um, if you're thinking about becoming a real estate agent, I would say one, go for it. Like, go for it. Like, I consider any skill set or anything that you can learn in life um, to help you serve others and also help put uh, resources into your pocket for you and your family that you can do, I say go for a thousand percent because that's just tools that's in your toolkit, right? Mm. Whether you have to use it, whether you use it a lot or not, why not have an extra tool in your toolkit? So that's how I feel about anything in life. Okay. Um, I would say, in addition to going for it, um, be patient. You know, part of my story is I, I went, you know, from, you know, July of 2020 all the way to February of 2021 before selling my first house. And now since then, it's been like a roller coaster. Um, a nine million dollar roller coaster. A nine million dollar right? roller coaster from last year to now, okay. um, from last February to now. Mm. So it hasn't mm. even been a whole second year yet. Um, so definitely be patient. Um, if it happened for me, it could happen for you. Um, and the third thing I would say that really helped me is to network and to reach out to realtors who are doing well. You know, what really helped me is I met, I literally went to lunch with realtors that were doing well and asked them for pointers and tips and different things like that. And they shared different things that was working for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can learn so much from someone else that's already been doing it versus just trying to figure it out on your, on your yeah. own stuff. So don't be afraid to reach out to people, you know, set up calls, set up lunches, whatever. Um, because that's was part of my story and my success. Yeah. I feel like some people overthink it. And it's like, don't uh, reinvent the wheel. You know, you can put your own spin on it. Right. Um, yeah, man. But no, I definitely love that. Yeah, for sure. And would you say someone should pursue part-time or full-time? So, I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, everyone's path and journey is different. I will start, I will preface my statement by that. Okay. So, you know, you, everybody's situation is different. I don't know what situation you're in. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, there's so many layers that, that lead to a person like making a decision whether or not they should go in full-time or part-time. Um, for me, I went in part-time in the beginning because I had basic necessities, basic needs that needed to be met and paid for um, in order to live, you know. Um, so now granted, if I wasn't married, if I was in a position where I was able to stay somewhere rent-free and my living expenses were extremely low, I would have went full time straight out the gate, but you have to look at your own situation, weigh out your own responsibilities, um, and depending on where you weigh things out at will determine whether or not you should go part time or full time. Um, that being said, I can't really say which one is the better one. Mm -hmm. um, my story is I went part time and then once I had enough money saved up, I was able to go full time. Um, I will say this, like if you are doing it full time, whether you're going straight out the gate doing it full time or whether you pivot from part time to full time like I did, like knowing that a sale, whether it happens or not, is not going to affect you paying your bills for that month is a beautiful thing. It allows you to, for me as a businessman, everybody's different, for me as a businessman, it, it allows my mind to be uh, clear as a businessman, knowing that my businesses that I'm doing, that I'm working on right now, does not affect whether or not like the lights stay on in my house. Okay. okay. So I, I would personally say, either way, if you can get in a position where you have several months of living expenses saved up, that is optimal for sure. Okay. And how how important is it to choose the right brokerage for you? Um, it's very very important to choose the right brokerage. Um, for me, the brokerage that I started off with. Um, I, and I hear this story and you might hear, whoever's watching this, you might hear this from time and time again. A lot of successful realtors, they do start off with a smaller brokerage that's more hands-on. Um, and that was my story. Um, now, depending, there's a lot of layers that go into like whether or not you should stay at that brokerage or not. Um, for me, my entire family was at Keller Williams brokerage. Um, which is kind of how I ended up pivoting there because um, I was able to uh, better leverage some of the 
setups that Keller Williams has and some of the resources and some of the education that they have. So at the end of the day, um, this is something that uh, my, 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 my first broker told me. She was like, at the end of the day, it's the power that worketh within you. So she pretty much was saying, if you're gonna produce, you can produce here, you can produce there, you can produce there, you know. Um, so in other words, like really, if you're gonna do well, like you don't wanna have the code go into this, like I, I'm not doing well because of my broker. When you are a realtor, you own that business. You are a business. You know, your broker is just there so that you can operate your business. Um, so that being said, you do want to go to a brokerage that can resource you well to run your business. Um, but at the end of the day, it's your business to be ran, not your brokers. Mm -hmm. So definitely. So what's next real estate wise? Mm -hmm. Real estate wise, where do you see John in three years, five years? What right. what do you, what do you hope to be? So or where where will you be? Let's speak. Right, right. So in the next three to five years, I will be what they call a, a, a million dollar real estate agent, um, meaning that I will my income for myself and my team will be a million each year. Um, so kind of for me right now, the stage that I'm in is I have so much business going on, I can't handle the business by myself. So I am um, building a team. So now not only can clients get great service and knowledgeable service from me as an individual, but if they come to me, I have a whole team of people that can also service them with the same level of excellence. So right now I am, I'm scaling. So in the next three to five years, I will have one of the top teams in Louisiana as it relates to real estate production. Mm -hmm. So that's where I see myself going. I gotcha. And that's after, that's, uh, that's crazy, man. After one year, you're scaling like that, man. Yeah, after, after, yeah, <laughs> yeah. After one year, it's already kind of at that at that at that stage of, of scaling. So yeah, yeah. And, uh, a little bit uh, a while ago, you said your entire family was at Keller Williams. Yeah. So my wife is also a realtor. Okay. Um, she's not as hands on as I am, um, but she's also a realtor, and she's at Keller Williams. She was at Keller Williams before we got married, so that oh, was okay. a fun first year of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> um, my brother is at Keller Williams. Okay. My, my, my full blood brother, he's at mm. Keller Williams. He's a realtor there as well. And then my uh, brother's sister-in-law um, is at Keller Williams mm. as well. And then myself. Mm. So all, all of us are at Keller Williams. And then I've had other people sign up at Keller Williams as well. Okay. So I'm not gonna say Keller Williams is the only brokerage that does things well or that equips and resources their agents, but they are definitely one of the better ones to do it so okay okay and do you ever see yourself getting more into investment properties or anything like that or oh yeah a thousand percent okay a thousand percent like i i definitely um because part of my story is i started off wholesaling so i started off working with investors um so my goal would be definitely to get into investing and for me i'm more of a i think a buy and hold type of guy um, only because, and this is just, um, this is just my perspective. I, I am able to make so much money as a realtor, um, that I don't know if I would necessarily want to like flip a home. That's where I'm at now. I might change my mind. I got you. you know, people grow, they evolve, they're exposed to different things. But yeah. for yeah. me, it's like the time and energy that it would take me to flip. I can just like serve clients cause I have an abundance of clients and make that same money or more. Um, so as far as like income is concerned, I, I can still maximize a lot of income just as a realtor, but for the long game, I definitely want to buy and hold, get some good tenants, provide housing for the community that I live in and the community I grew up in, um, and for communities all over the place. So definitely, definitely. Um, one more question. Well, two more questions. Um, any tips, uh, for any real estate agents who really want to solidify their brand because I see you I see John as a brand you know John mm -hmm. is this person you see him on Instagram mm -hmm. you know you're, you're cool you're this persona you know what I mean but yeah. really I mean in real life bro you're literally the same person you know what I mean oh, yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. not like you're facade you know what I mean <laughs> right, right. so so really do you have any tips for anyone who really want to build their brand up because I mean really I mean that's what people see is who want to you right. know pursue yeah. you so yeah for sure I would say first like know who you are don't try to be anyone who you're not um, be authentic, you know, because 
the worst thing that could happen is you present yourself as one way and then when you meet someone in person that they're not getting what was advertised so know who you are be true to yourself um, and I would say treat your brand yourself as a realtor like a business you know so like I I post different listings that I have I, I run ads I do everything that I would do as a business but I am the business so as a realtor you have to start seeing yourself as a business and and don't be afraid of spending money on your business um to scale so that's what that's what I would say and like for me it's pretty cool so like I've started branding for me sorry y'all can't take it I already took it um, the Nola realtor so like mm. that's my brand It's currently being trademarked mm. and that's what you're gonna see ever you're gonna see it on billboards I'm gonna have a shirt every post that I do is gonna say the Nola realtor um, no one else has used that hashtag. So. Stamped and official. <laughs> yeah, stamped and official. So I'm the first one to use it, and it's mine, and I'm excited to like right. take that and run with it. Love um, it. But figure out what your niche is. You know, uh, figure out some type of way for someone to remember you, whether that's um, a, a, a phrase or a, a saying or something, something catchy that 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 uh, puts you in someone else's mind and it keeps you there. Mm. So for me, it's the Nola Realtor. So all my clients. When I have closing gifts, when I'm posting stuff, it's like the NOLA Realtor, the NOLA Realtor. So that whenever they're having conversations with their friends, coworkers, or family members, and something comes up about a real estate need, I'm in their mind, the NOLA Realtor. And they're like, oh, you should call John. And that's part of the reason why my business is scaling. Although I just sold my first house last year, everyone that I've helped, like they send me multiple clients. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you want to be consistent with your brain. You want to be excellent with your customer service as well, because that is what will um, sustain you, give you opportunity to scale. Um, so that was kind of like my experience with it. So definitely, definitely, man. So let's talk about who's John outside of real estate. We have passions, you know, hobbies. You know, what do you yeah. do outside? Yes. So for me, John outside of real estate, it's a couple of things. One is I I like to work out. You know, uh, you can always catch me at Ashner Fitness Center. Um, I'm a, a big fitness guy. You know, that's kind of my second home, the gym. So I like to do that. I like to travel. Um, so my wife and I are always traveling. And then for me, to be honest, like my faith personally is very important to me. So um, I'm involved in my local church, always serving the community that I live in, serving those who are in need. Um, and then just sharing, sharing the truth that I have, you know, from my faith and my life experiences with other people so that they can be uplifted mm. is also probably one of my bigger passions as well. So outside of real estate, that's kind of like a quick snapshot of who John is. Okay. Okay. Uh, John, before we check out this beautiful home that you have listed uh, on the market right now, can you please repeat that quote you told me before we hopped on camera? Okay. <laughs> I told Reggie <laughs> yeah. that a bird in your hand is better than two birds in the bushes. Mm. Meaning, in life, sometimes you're gonna have something that's really good that you need to stick with, but for many of us, the possibility of having two birds in the bushes makes us let go of that good thing that we have. And the quote speaks to this truth that if you live a life consistently holding on to the good birds that you do have in your hand as time progresses you're actually going to end up with more birds than the individual who's always getting something good and letting go because they think something else is better and they're always doing that every now and then they might find something that's better but at the rate that they do find something that's better they're still going to be much further ahead much further uh, um, behind rather than the individual who kept the bird in their hand. So mm. one bird in your hand is better than two birds in the bushes. Drops mic. <laughs> <laughs> listed. Okay. How long has it been on the market? So this property has been on the market right on a 30 days. Um, we are at 5910 Music Street. Um, this is a beautiful home, 1850 square feet. Um, and I'm going to give you all a tour. It was completely renovated down from the studs mm. um, over this past year. Okay, okay. So um, as you come in, you have this beautiful um, area where you can kind of sit and relax. You have your television here, nice little sectional right here. Um, so it's just very open. Um, as you can see, the lights go through the house. And this is just like a nice welcome area. It has its own kind of um, section as you go through the house. As you continue going on, you have the sitting area here as far as um, 
lunch, dinner, and just a place for you to eat. Also, if you have company over, not only do you have this space over here to host them, it also can bleed over here. This is a perfect um, open concept house, yeah. so it's a perfect host house. And then right from here, you go into this beautiful kitchen where everything was redone. You have these beautiful lights here, this very nice island where you can also sit a couple individuals. You have all stainless steel appliances. Um, all of that comes with the house, new cabinets, um, you have a nice gas stove or range oven. So it's a beautiful setup. And from here all the way to the door, you have just this beautiful flow um, of the house, this open concept where you can really host and enjoy this open area. Definitely. Um, so from here, I'll show you all the primary suite um, and then we'll work our way back. So uh, this is the primary suite. So as you can see, um, it's very spacious, decorated very nicely. Um, great place to put a TV right here. Yeah. Um, right here to my right, your left, you can see a walk-in closet. Um, so plenty of space for you to do a custom build out if you wanted to, or if not, you can use the space that's already there. And then in here, we have um, a beautiful uh, primary suite that you can take a look at. So I love this mirror. Like this mirror is, is amazing. It has the ring light around it. Um, everything has been done from the top all the way down to the bottom, to the floor, to the shower. Um, you have the towel going along the side of the, of the shower as well. So it's a very custom high-end um, finishing one. touches. Well, that mirror, man. So, uh, moving right along. So, as you come out, so this is the, the second bathroom right here. And uh, this would be um, also, you have the nice mirror as well. Um, a, nice, a lot of nice fixtures and the finishes touches. And you have the nice shower tub area right here as well. Oh, yeah. So all this has been completely redone. Um, so very, very spacious. Do you have a favorite room in this listing so far? Or, you know? uh, I would say for me, I'm gonna show you that my favorite room is at the back. Okay. Because there's a second living room area. So I'm gonna show that to y'all in a second. So then you have your, your laundry room right here as well so um nice and conveniently located kind of right in the middle yeah. um then you have this third bedroom which also can service as an office um it's not as large but it's enough to sleep with one person yeah. if you needed to um yeah. so this is just kind of like a bonus room nice to be used. Room, yeah. yeah and then you have this room right here which is a a large pretty nice size third bedroom so you have this space you have a nice closet space right here where you can put a lot of different clothes um and with this room as you can see you can set up the bed this way or you can um if you wanted to turn it around the other yeah, way there's just that. a lot of options yeah. if you have a long room here. um then one of my favorite parts of the house is this little living room area over here uh, so this is awesome uh, you have your higher ceilings right here towards the back of the house so that's a cool aspect then you have this fireplace um you have the gas fireplace that turns on you can turn it on with the remote get some some natural fire going right there you have your tv and you have this nice fireplace that was completely redone as well so this is a cool area and then the last part of this house which is super cool is the backyard um it's been raining a little bit yeah but definitely every day this week <laughs> yeah right right <laughs> Uh, so this is kind of the backyard space so cool thing you don't have to worry about a lot of maintenance um, as far as cutting the grass but it's a cool patio space you can barbecue have some friends over it's a, a great hosting space so the last part you have the garage right here as well you have a very long um, driveway um, when you pull up outside so you have enough space to park all of your cars all of your your company's cars and mm. you have the garage which also fits one car if you wanted to park a car there okay. and then have somebody come in through this door. Definitely. definitely. So, um, so yeah, so that's 5910 Music Street. And how much um, is it listed for? It's currently listed at $364,500. Um, so $364,500. Um, there's a couple of houses right down the street, a couple of blocks, well, not even a couple of blocks, a couple of houses down that just sold for five twenty-five. dollars mm. um, And there's new construction happening um, right in the corner lot right there. So this particular part of Gentilly um, is booming. It's a great opportunity to still purchase. Um, you're definitely going to have your house appreciate over time, um, especially this house being completely redone as it has been. So come definitely, check us out. Definitely, man. And how can we, how can they find you? 
Um, you can find me on Instagram at John McCann. Uh, that's J O H N M C C A N N and then two underscores. Um, or you can just search the Nola Realtor as well, just the, the word the Nola Realtor, uh, three different words, and I'll come up as well. So you can catch me on, on, on my website. Um, my website is on my Instagram, rather. So you can click that and you can schedule a call with me if you're interested in investing, buying, selling, leasing, whatever the case might be. Hit me up. I would love to service you as the Nola Realtor. Boom. Thank you, John. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, Ray.